I feel like this review for this particular episode is going to be all over the place because I loved it and I was also annoyed. <laughs> all right, let's go. Welcome to my save Gaven. Thank you guys for clicking on this video and joining me for another review of Peacemaker on the Black Gay Comic Geek channel. Hey, how's it going? If this is your first time clicking on this video, my name is Michael. I am the Black Gay Comic Geek. I always say the things that I love to talk about in my fantasy has blood, sex, gore, and magic, or any variation of the four. So I like to talk about superheroes. I like to talk about video games. I like to talk about action movies. I like to talk fantasy. I like to talk sci-fi. I like to talk about black representation and queer representation. So hopefully that is something that you are interested in. If you're not, yeah, please go somewhere else. But if you are, do me a favor. You can hit that like button. It'll really help with the YouTube algorithm. Check out the other videos on my channel. And... Hopefully you hit the subscribe button and become one of my safe gamers and leave a comment to say hey so I can get to know you guys. So yeah, we are here to talk about episode 7 of Peacemaker, the penultimate episode, the episode before the season finale. So if you haven't seen episode 7, I'll be talking spoilers on this video. So yeah, this episode is called Stop Dragging My Heart Around. Pun on the word because dragon, like dragon, rawr, Game of Thrones, Daenerys Targaryen, the mother of all dragons, that dragon is the title of this episode. But anyway, yeah. So this episode opens, we see Peacemaker crying after playing that song. I can't think of the name of the song that he played last week. When we finally get to find out what happened with his brother. And the thing I also liked about the beginning and the opening of this episode is the moment where Vigilante is pounding on the door and then that leads into the opening credits of Do You Really Want It To? I, I thought the way they edited that transition was smooth. Like, I was like, oh, that's pretty dope. But yeah, like, so it turns out like, yeah, it's just showing that his father is more of a hick where he had his two sons fighting each other as if they're dogs in a pit match or whatever, which you shouldn't fight dogs, even though I say that as I'm playing Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is basically animal fights. <laughs> so this whole time I'm thinking maybe Peacemaker like accidentally killed his brother by like stabbing him or something like that. Like, and that's what started his journey of becoming a mass murderer. But it's like, no, it's actually, it was literally an accident and an accident that didn't have to happen had their father not have been a white supremacist, racist piece of dookie water. And this whole time he's been blaming himself because his father's been blaming him. And I, he looks up to his father, most kids do. And also these people do not go to therapy whenever they experience some level of traumatic event. Even somebody like a Batman who should constantly be in therapy is not going to therapy, at least not as much as he should. And he's a billionaire, damn near out of everybody in the DC universe, he's the one that could go to therapy realistically. And so anyway, with that, we see the reason for Peacemaker's effed up existence, his father and his bandit of white supremacist white dragons, they're looking for him to take him out. His father finally wants to kill him after threatening to do so for 40 plus years. And I was just like, yeah, this is, I'm like, this whole thing is, they all need to go. They all need to go, which thankfully by the end of this episode, they did, but I'll get to that. But okay, get into the intro of this video where I said I both love this episode and it also annoyed the hell out of me. This is the thing that annoyed me. And I mentioned this last week and I also mentioned this, I think in other episodes as well, but I am not a fan of how they have written the character of Leota Adebayo, played wonderfully by Danielle Brooks. It has nothing to do with her performance. It has everything to do with how she was written. They basically fend her from Star Wars in Peacemaker. And what I mean by that is they've been making this character to seem like she's going to end up being pretty important. Kind of like they did with Finn with all the marketing. They made it seem like he was going to be the Jedi. They made it seem like the movie was mostly going to be about him. They made it seem like he was going to be the chosen one and everything like that, only to pull the wool over our eyes. And he 
be a character that didn't really do or accomplish anything within the Star Wars, this new Star Wars trilogy universe. Like I still to this day say Finn should have been the Jedi. You Like it was a better story. Like you have a stormtrooper, a former stormtrooper breaking away from the brainwashing to take down the people that raised and trained and brainwashed him. That's a great story. And then also like the emotional baggage of killing his comrades and plus having Having a black Jedi outside of Mace Windu, like come, and he also should have been in love with Poe Dameron, and that should have been a whole romance. They should have been the Han and Leia of this new. Anyway, I'm gonna get upset all over again about the sequel trilogy and how much they shitted the bed. But then, because I have to, I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about it anymore, but I have to mention this part. But like, how they made it seem like Finn was not that important within the first order where he was just like, oh, I'm just a janitor. And that's basically what they did with Adebayo. Like all this talk with Amanda Waller saying, you have the talent to do this. You're wasting your talent. You're doing all of this stuff and you're not putting it to use So whatever. Only to find out that she was like the supervisor of a dog clinic. And so it goes back to my point that I made last week where I was just like, so then why is she on a black ops team risking her life with guns and murder and CIA expert when she really has no qualifications to be there. First of all, why did Mern even accept her? Because then you find out that Mern knew she was the daughter of Amanda Waller. And yeah, he probably did it to appease Waller, but she has no skills whatsoever. Uh. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't want to make it seem like she's incompetent. Plus, you know, calling a black woman, I, that's not, but I'm like, but after this episode, it's like literally she has absolutely no qualifications to be there. And they make it seem like, I don't know, they kind of make it seem like she's a little naive, not even just naive, but slow. Like when her and Hardcore was arguing back and forth and then she was like, oh, I thought you were talking about some type of medical condition. Just random. It's like, what are you even talking about? Like, or even the, I, and it makes me even go back to conversations from episode two where she was driving uh, when the, FBI or the cops were going after Peacemaker and she was waiting on Peacemaker and just like her commentary about the dog and just like now just it's just making me rethink her entire character where it's just like I thought she was playing them only for there to be some type of big reveal at the end and granted we still got one more episode she could pull some type of magic or whatever out of her pocket but like I'm hating what they did with her character and my biggest fear which is something I mentioned in the beginning of this show and I mentioned for last week's episode and it just after this episode is basically confirmed for me that the sole reason that her character was put in this show was to make Peacemaker not racist. They couldn't even make this plus size black woman in a superhero franchise, which is something you don't see often, qualified to be on a black ops team. I guess that was too much for them. So that's the part that I, I don't know, I just hated about this episode. But what I didn't hate is that finally, Peacemaker's father, the white dragon, ended up getting what's coming to him. And I had a feeling that he was gonna die by the end of this season, but he, he didn't die as graphic and as bloody as I wanted him to. Like, I wanted him to suffer as opposed to just the quick shot to the head and he's basically done. But I'm still glad it happened. But I don't want this to be Peacemaker's redemption. I need him to make some amends or whatever for all the terrible things that he's done in the past. Not just the fact that, oh, I killed my father so everything's forgiven, right? No, absolutely not. This is a step, but it's only a step. But speaking of steps, it seems like the butterflies are a couple steps closer to achieving their goal of getting rid of this cow. Like they killed Mern, which I mean, I'm not surprised about, but still <laughs> just like, dang. And then the way, not only did they kill the body, but then they squished his butterfly form. Uh, formerly Detective Song, who's now Groff or Goff, the leader of the butterflies, just squished him. And I was like, who would have thought I would have like an emotional attachment to like this insect looking butterfly creature. I was just like, oh no, not Mern. Or he's not Mern, so not not Mern. So now that Mern is out of the picture, Harcor has is the most obvious choice to be the leader. And when they ended up showing that whole the cow giant looking insect thing that which is where they get their food, I was just like whoa, like what the hell? First of all, I'm like, what is that thing? 
where did it come from? But I thought it I thought it looked great in terms of the filming aspect of it. But this is also something, now that I'm thinking about it, something that they something that I wanted to mention about this episode that also annoys me. Not as much as the Adebayo thing, but I'm just like, come on. Come on. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> I talk about all the time when it comes to queer relationships and movies, television shows, video games comics, etc., that I am tired of subtext and I want some fucking text. In this episode, and I've been saying before, I was just like, I want Peacemaker and Vigilante to have sex at least one time. Come on. Like, I feel like the chemistry is there. The tension is there. They should do it. And especially as much as Vigilante kind of talks about, oh yeah, let's talk about, let's go bang some chicks or whatever. I'm like, doth the lady protest too much? Like, come on. <laughs> but... They actually confirmed in this episode that Peacemaker has had sexual relations with men. And I'm assuming because his father knew about it, that it happened not just with him in prison, but it's happened multiple times. And so I'm like, and granted, obviously with the sake, with the way the show has been going and, you know, I'm like, where, where is there really time for that? But at the same time, I'm still like, they had no problem showing him have sex with a woman, but when it comes to like the male on male relations, they could only just mention it. Oh yeah, Peacemakers had sex with men, but show, don't tell. And this type of stuff happens constantly. Like I mentioned Deadpool, they keep talking about how Deadpool's pansexual. Deadpool will have no problems being in a relationship with another man, but we've never seen it. They only hint at it, they make jokes about it but they don't do the full follow through. They keep saying Wonder Woman is bisexual. Hey, she's come from an entire island of women. But again, we've never seen it. We've only seen her with Steve Trevor. We've seen hints of her being wanted, wanted to be with Batman in the animated series. We've seen her be with Superman in the comics, but we've never seen her with another woman, which is happening right now, but it's in, in, in a, in a uh, Elseworld story where she's dating another Kryptonian who's a woman. But again, it's an Elseworld story. They came out and said Star-Lord is bisexual in the comics, but we haven't seen it. We've only seen him with women. So yeah, I could go on and on for characters that they they, they talk about or hint at. Johnny Storm the, from the Fantastic Four, the Human Torch, they say he's pansexual. He's had a sexual relationship with Wolverine's son, Dakin. But again, we have haven't seen it. They only hint at it. Like, so I'm, I'm tired of subtext. I want fucking text. But anyway, that's all I got to say. It's just certain things about the narrative that, or that they continue to do in terms of the narrative that just continues to frustrate me. But overall, I still enjoy the show. I find a lot of moments complete. I like, I find a lot of the jokes and banter funny. And actually, now that I think about it, one of my most laugh out loud moments was when Judo Master showed back up and he took out those guys at the convenience store. And one of them was like, it's a leprechaun. <laughs> and then Judo Master whooped they ass. <laughs> and then even the fight between him and Hardcore, like I enjoy Every time I see Judo Master on screen, <laughs> like, I want to see more from this character. Hopefully, if they get a season two. So, but yeah, anyway, that's all I got to say about this episode. The question is, what do you guys think about Stop Dragging My Heart Around, episode seven of Peacemaker? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you can, once again, reminder, hit that thumbs up button and like this video to really help out with the YouTube channel and the algorithm. If this is one of your first time checking out one of my videos, please check out the other videos on my channel. And if you like what you see, please subscribe for more and hit that bell notification button so you're alerted every single time I post a new video and tell your friends, families, and neighbors about my channel to help me continue to grow. I'm thinking the next time I do my nails, like, cause I'm like, I really like this color. So I'm like, I think I'm gonna get this shade of blue. But anyway, and as always, I will catch you guys next time.